I have not only double and triple checked now that the mic is actually working, unlike the Q&A video, which that was over an hour's worth of recorded footage for that. So there was no way I was re-recording that video. Again, I do apologize for the bad audio quality. I've also checked that I am in focus so hopefully now we can get to reviewing BD1. This set came out a few years ago and actually retired at the end of last year. When it was available, the retail price was £90, though you can still pick it up today for £80, at least here in the UK, I'm sure. There are still a few other stores that have this, which is very interesting because then we look at something like the Pirate Snub Fighter, which is still available from LEGO, yet it seems to have already retired everywhere else. So this must have been a popular enough set that stores have ordered so much they're still getting rid of the last of their stock. But it is part of the buildable character series. It's an unofficial series. I don't think Lego have actually given it a title, but we've seen things this year like the droid car. We've also got the Grogu. We've got the Grievous from all the way back, which was technically a part of the UCS collection, similar to R2-D2 was, but it's made its own name for itself with all the other options we have, including most recently C-3PO, Chewbacca, and the many different variations of R2-D2, except for the little one. They are more of a playset. BD-1, if you aren't aware, is from the Jedi game franchise, which not only includes Fallen Order and Survivor, but we are still meant to be getting a third installment to that game franchise. So I look forward to playing that whenever it comes out. I have completed the first game 100% and I'm en route to the second. So this won't be the only Jedi game franchise video you see because I hope to be revisiting some of the creatures and building them out of Lego in the near future. Today's video is all about this droid though. This is my fiance set because she absolutely loves BD-1 and I think it was a great droid to build in Lego. The BD-1 in the games doesn't do too much initially. They give him a few abilities in the second game, but he just sort of sits on Cal's shoulder whilst he is fighting. And even when you open the map, BD-1 is no help. He might store all the different locations, but he doesn't help you find where you are. So you're scrolling for hours on this mini map, looking where you need to go, where you need to complete that last quest on the planet. And BD-1's just sat there showing you the map absolutely no help at all. This Lego model, however, is really, really nice on display. And I think they've gone all out to not only get it to look really good, but also give it some play features, which you don't usually see in these display models. First off, the feet do have a bit of flexibility in them if you are sitting them on a not flat surface. So you don't have to make sure your shelf is perfectly flat. You could probably even build a little display out of bricks, a little rocky terrain using some of them slopes. We've got from the Ambush on Mandalore Battle Pack 2. Just add a bit to display. That would actually look really, really cool. I've got it sandwiched between the Disney Castle and my Lego Star Wars minifigure display. So not much room for slopes, but you can angle these legs. Not only do they bend up and backwards, I think you could potentially get 360 degrees of rotation through the legs because there doesn't seem to be an end to the joint, but of course the head will get in the way if you try and bend it too far. You can also bend them in and outwards because of the double joint. I really think Lego need to invest in some stronger ball joints for these sort of connections, but there's two joints there. One that allows you to bend the legs inwards. Not really sure why you'd want to. It looks like BD1 needs to use the restroom, but it's a fun play feature nonetheless. So. Can't really criticize it. The torso, the head, and the legs are very, very detailed. I would have loved for them to give them some customizable options for BD1, which we do see more in the second game. I can't remember how much you can customize him in the first game. It's probably just his color. As we're all already aware, Lego is very customizable. It's a brick building system, and all these elements used to build BD1 are available in so many other colors. You can change up BD1 style to whichever color you like. And I think from a Lego set, that really does have a greater appeal compared to a model kit that you could paint, but it's a lot harder. That's not the only connection that can move. So the feet have a joint, the legs have two joints. You can't bend the legs halfway, I don't think, because they are kept in with some Technic beams behind them, but you can move the head at two different points. Well, it turns out it's only one different point. There is a joint on the neck here just at the top which allows you to angle BD's head so he can look down. He can look all the way up and again 
This can go much further than it needs to. I don't know what BD1 is looking at except for the crack in my ceiling, but the play features even don't stop there. One play feature that LEGO haven't added that I think would have been quite cool is a little hole through the eyes so that you can use BD1 as some sort of binoculars that you see in the second game. I don't know how they'd do that with LEGO. We do get the stim canisters, which is BD1's main feature. When cow's health is running low, you can pop out a stim and it's a difficult feature to get out because you can't slide the drawer out fully. So you do need to somewhat tip them out of BD. But there are three stim canisters here, which I think is a really fun addition. And again, it's gonna be on display. It's not something that you'll be popping out to show everyone that comes around. But if you know they're there, it's a very fun addition and they slot straight in. You could probably modify it to get more than three in there, but to make it not as obvious and to fit in with the other side of BD's head, you can see there is some nice slopes used just to flatten off that underside and get that angle without just rounding it off or just squaring it off like you'd see on a much smaller Lego model. And they've sloped off this side of the drawer as well, so it fits in little gap between the drawer and the head but it's not something you're going to notice when it is on display and you also have a little three by four gap in the top which is where i believe the stims actually come from from bd1 so like i've said even though it is a display model and people that are buying this aren't going to be playing around with it there are definitely plenty of fun play features and different ways you can just display this model the detail and all the angles they've got on BD1 is definitely something that someone sat for such a long time to get right. We've got some angled slopes on the side of the eyes here. The eyes themselves are mounted on some bricks out of system using plenty of slopes to get the round insert to leave this gap in the middle where I guess is BD's lack of a nose. We've also got these round pieces on the side which act as the ears which again also do move so perhaps you could have the ears down if you've got not enough space on your shelf it does decrease the height quite a bit and gives bd1 a much sadder expression than when they are up so i think we're going to be keeping him up so he looks a bit more cheery on the back side we've got another plate that is hooked on using brackets or hinges and then some more snot bricks on the back just to give all the different angles and the torso is very very well detailed it's a little bit of greebling to get all the different cables and technological elements on BD's torso as well as on the side of the legs you've got the thrusters you've got the other joints which even though you can't move the feet around at the bottom they've still detailed it as if the joints are actually there so this is such a detailed model and definitely worth the price if you haven't picked it up you can still pick this up for about 10% off it's going for about £80 on Bricklink and even though Amazon have this sell in for something crazy like £200 when I checked just before recording this video. And in case you were wondering how the price adds up to the weight of it, you can see we've got 707, 708 grams of BD1, which puts it at about 13 pence per gram, which is very similar to the old Desert Skiff. We've got the AAT, the TIE Fighter and X-Wing from 2021. TIE Fighter from 2012 is a little better and not far off the ATT Eaton Ghost. So it's actually a pretty decent price and is a lot better than them battle packs at the top of the list. They do come with a specifications plaque with a small BD-1 minifigure. It's not the first time we've seen this type of droid in LEGO because in Mando's N1 we do get a blue one which was really nice to see in show and was the first BD live action cameo we've seen in Star Wars. On the specifications plaque, BD1 is said to be manufactured by Behold Urawa Droid Concepts, it is a BD Explorer droid model, which is kind of given with the BD1 name. Height is 0.43 meters, so I guess we can measure this up to minifigure scale. We'll do that in just a second. Primary functions is navigation and repair. Makes sense, he's the reason we have a mini map in the game and also gives Cal some stims to replenish his health bar. And as far as equipment, we've got a spotlight, which is seen just on the front, a scomp link, which is probably something that we wouldn't visibly be able to see. A hollow projector, again, on the front next to the flashlight, a stim canister storage. And as we've said, that is a nice little compartment for us on the side, though was usually be, I'm pretty sure this gap on the top. So the specifications plaque is quite nice, 
It's worth saying it is a sticker. If you're buying this down the road after this video is out, they are all printed now in Star Wars, but BD-1 is a sticker. I think we got a few different printed ones last year, so it would have been nice towards the end of the run. You heard me say a similar thing in the UCS minifigure collection where we went over all my UCS minifigures from sets that weren't UCS sets. Similar to the Captain Rex Y-Wing Microfighter. For the first UCS Death Star, they actually replaced the minifigures in the set to the updated versions. The set came out in 2008 and in 2009, we started getting pupils and a lot more face details with our Star Wars minifigures. So they actually updated all the minifigures in the set. I'd have loved last year if they updated BD-1's plaque to a printed plaque. I think these printed plaques were definitely something that a load of people wanted to get and people would have picked up another set just for the printed plaque, I'm sure. BD-1 does have a stud on the back, which is something that LEGO have consciously decided to do, and I'm not entirely sure why, but perhaps that's just for another connection point to attach it to a minifigure, because I have mine displayed on my custom Cal Kestis, which I know there are a few different upgrades I can make and better pieces, but eventually I am hoping to get my hands on the anniversary minifigure of Cal Kestis, so there's no point upgrading my custom minifigure, but you can see I've attached BD to the back of Cal using a one by one bracket and one of the one by one backpack pieces and that definitely looks pretty cool. If you're a fan of the buildable droids and buildable characters, I think this definitely fits better with the buildable droids than the buildable characters. I think you probably already have this on display and are just watching this video to hear me talk about this set even more. But this is a great purchase. If you can try and part out the actual BD, I'm not sure there's any exclusive pieces here. So you should be able to part out the full droid. And if you're not fussed about the minifigures or the display plaques, I think that's a great way of collecting all the buildable characters. I know C-3PO and Chewbacca do have a few exclusive pieces and pieces that have been recolored. I wonder how 3PO would look if you parted out the model on Bricklink using already existing pieces. That's something I'll definitely have to put together in studio and see if it looks as good as the original model. But now let's take a look if this fits to minifigure scale. I realized after recording that clip, I said if he fits to minifigure scale, this BD-1 minifigure isn't minifigure scale. This model definitely isn't minifigure scale. The real life BD-1 is meant to be 43 centimeters which is massive. There is no way BD-1 is meant to be this tall. Well, it's not life-size scale, I guess. This BD-1, if you were to include the antennas, I guess you could probably put the antennas up a little bit. We're looking at 34 centimeters. I think that is a lot more realistic to what we see next to Cal. I'm not sure the height of Cal, but I have on screen measurements of Cal Kestis and then BD as a ratio of Cal Kestis. And hopefully that'll give us something a closer to 34. If you don't want to include the antennas, we're looking at about 28 centimeters. I really don't think BD-1 is 43 centimeters. That's almost a third of an average human and BD-1 definitely isn't that big in the games. Perhaps the specification plaque is a little off with BD's measurement, but besides that, this is a really cool set. It features in the background and I think it looks great alongside my giant Captain Rex. And I know a lot of you are actually creeped out by this giant Captain Rex. It's based off the Lego Big Fig and it's almost the same height as BD-1, which is really cool. If you do have the giant Lego figure, if you've made a custom one of yourself or if you own BD-1, you can see roughly how tall they all are and minifigure scale. This is probably even bigger than Giant Man, the biggest version of Ant-Man in the MCU. And if you're wondering what the stick is that Rex is holding, it's actually the one from last year's Back to Hogwarts Day from September the 1st, which I'd love to go back to a Lego store this year, but thank you for making it to the end of the video. Let me know what you think of BD-1 down in the comments. Do you have the set? Would you like the set? Is this something that you'd consider parting out on Brickling later on and check out all the videos on screen now. May the bricks be with you always.